Good afternoon to you all who are attending the Coventry Violence Summit at the Welcome Centre today. I'm really sorry I can't be with you. I wanted to be and was very much hoping to be, but, to be, but I, I found myself called to another summit uh, at Lambeth Palace, where, where the Archbishop of Canterbury is based. It's a state of the nation um, summit there. And uh, I, as someone once said to Jesus, I'm a man under authority, so I thought I needed to be there. Uh, but actually the two things are rather uh, related because uh, rising violence among young people is, is surely one of the most pressing and distressing issues facing our nation at this time. We know it's left many, too many young lives tragically cut short, many families torn apart, many communities reeling in fear. As we know, the reasons behind the problem of rising youth violence are complex and multifaceted and we know that there are all sorts of adverse experiences, vulnerabilities, choices, circumstances that lead a young person to pick up a, a knife and use it uh, against another human being. Violence is a disease, it's a disease that engages and then ultimately corrupts the minds, hearts and souls of our young people and those they know and love in their families and their wider community. We know that the challenge of youth violence is great, but there is hope for our young people. The first, I, I'm sure we would agree, the foremost sign of, of that hope is, is the young people themselves who are wanting to and ready to and, and uh, determined to play their part uh, and drive the solutions themselves. And, the second part, if, if I may say, is today's gathering, which sends out a, a message to the brave and talented, caring young people of our city that, that we are on their side, we are on your side. We're, we're here to cheer you on, to, uh, to protect you, to resource you, and to celebrate your successes and help those become greater. To do this, to be able to provide that sort of support, seems to, we, seems to me that we need to exercise the, the same faculties that have been so damaged among some of our most vulnerable young people. We need to exercise our minds, our hearts and our souls. So just a few thoughts on those three themes. So firstly, may I say that I'm really inspired by the quality of the thinking, the use of minds uh, that's gone into the research and, and the expertise that has uh, gone into the, to the violence reduction strategy, which is published today. The public health approach it builds on is a sophisticated and nuanced model that acknowledges that every young person is different and has different needs. And I commend the statutory bodies that have led on formulating this strategy from our own city council to our emergency and social services. I'm also moved by the quality, as it were, of people's hearts. By the way, well, here we have an array of community and third sector leaders represented at the summit who are really wanting to make a difference, whose hearts move them to make a difference. Having been now bishop in the city for over 10 years, I know that's that, that isn't something that people just feel, but want to do to express it in action. And I really, um, I'm really encouraged and, and really commend that the, that the many charities, community groups, organisations, which provide services day in, day, in, day out to our young people from uh, youth centres and, and mentoring to early year help intervention and teaching what marvellous work of course happening in our schools. Minds, hearts, a, a word uh, about souls. Uh, I, I am really pleased about the response of the church, other faith communities and faith-based organisations in Coventry, uh, in, in there, in our um, desire to, to respond to, to these needs. I, uh, and I rejoice in our ability across the city, regardless of our faith. I, I think we can all join together in words um, that um, 
well that one of my own priests uh, uh, put together for the funeral of Jaden James, tragically murdered uh, through uh, youth violence. He, he said, these are powerful words, we declare that the power of love and forgiveness is stronger than the power of fear and revenge. We will each play our part. We will not be afraid. Today we choose, today we choose to believe in hope. The Places of Peace project, which you'll hear about shortly, is one of the ways in which faith communities can actively work together to support their city and to bless their city. Today is an important opportunity for hearts and minds and souls to be engaged in the service of the young people of Coventry. So I hope and pray that today is a significant moment, perhaps a turning point in the outcomes for our most vulnerable young people.